Now, let me tell you about my uh, football career. I once scored three touchdowns at recess in third grade, all right? And, um, you know, that may be the highlight. Of course, there was a girl that was guarding me, all right? So, uh, gave her the old stiff arm and scored a touchdown. So, uh, but uh, we're very, very glad that you're here with us today. And uh, I won't be very long, but I do want to read a passage of Scripture today that I think is going to be incredibly helpful for all of us, no matter where you are on your journey, uh, in your faith, and no matter where you are in your career. And the title of my message is this, Be Rich in What Matters Most. Now, we all have had fantasies, I'm sure, about being rich or winning the lottery or being the best at something. And um, th- those are good fantasies, I guess, to have, as long as you don't let the, them uh, uh, become an obsession in your life. But what we need to learn to do in life, no matter what our talent level is, no matter what our opportunities are, no matter what conditions we find ourselves in, our best opportunity is to be rich in what matters the most. Well, I've done a lot of funerals in my life, and I've visited a lot of nursing homes and a lot of hospitals, Um, and I know that we often obsess over things that don't matter very much at all. Do you ever notice that? We're always concerned about things that, in the end, don't matter a lot. What I know is from people that are about to pass away or people that have passed away and I've talked to them about what's important in life is that most of what we obsess over, you're not going to be thinking about at all at the end of your life. I've never done a funeral where I talked to the person before they had passed away that ever said, I regret not spending more time at the office. I've never heard that. I've never even heard anybody say, boy, I wish I'd made more money. And and there's certainly nothing wrong with having a job and doing it well. And there's certainly nothing wrong with having money. But listen closely, those are not the things that matter most in life. And what we need to learn to do is to focus on those things and be rich in what matters the most. My grandparents... Um, bought me lots of gifts. I I was the oldest grandchild on both sides. You you think maybe I was spoiled a little bit? Uh, I was, okay? I was the oldest grandchild on both sides, and I got lots and lots of gifts. But I want to tell you, to this day, and I really tried, I cannot remember a single gift that they gave me. Now, I know sometimes they gave me clothes. Sometimes they gave me socks which wasn't a big deal. Sometimes they gave me things that I wanted, toys and things of that nature, but I can't remember a single gift that they gave me. But you know what I can remember? I can remember that almost every Sunday after church, we would go to my grandparents' house and we'd have a feast. And I remember my grandmother Uh, was, I mean, she was really a good cook, and all the people in our family would bring all this wonderful food, and my uh, desire and love for good old homemade banana pudding began there. And I remember, I remember the cookouts that we would have. I remember my grandpa, uh, he was so proud of the sugar-cured country ham that he made. And I got to tell you, It's the best still to this day that I've ever eaten in my life. Now, I don't remember the gifts that they gave me. I don't remember any of those things. But you know what I do remember? I remember the time that I spent with them. I remember those family times. And I know that some of you are not able because of distance or uh, problems or whatever, aren't able to have those relationships. But I just want you to understand, I'm using this as an illustration to be rich and what matters most. You know what matters to me right now, even though my grandparents are dead, is not that they bought me a shirt or gave me a Christmas gift. I don't remember any of those. But man, I sure do have wonderful memories of them. 
And so what you and I need to learn to do is that we need to learn how to be rich in what matters most. I'm going to read you a, a brief parable that Jesus told. And in this parable, he gives us insight into what is so important in life. I want you to read with me in Luke chapter 12, uh, just a few verses, verses 16 through 21. It says, then he told them a parable. There was a rich man. Now understand that Jesus' audience was made up mostly of common people. There were some wealthy people in his audience. There were the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes and and many uh, officials that followed him. So there were some rich people. There were some middle-class people. But most of them were normal, normal working people. So he got their attention. There was a rich man. I'm sure everybody had their own idea of what that looked like. Oh, what it would mean to be rich. Oh, if I just had a little more money. Oh, if I just had a little more land. He says, there was a rich man and he starts to pour it on even a little thicker, whose land produced a bountiful harvest. So not only was he rich, but he was successful, and some might say very lucky. You ever look at successful people and just think, man, you are so lucky? Well, sometimes people are lucky, but more times than we like to admit, that was not the reason for their wealth. That was not the reason for their success. But Jesus said there was this rich man and his land produced a bountiful harvest. And he asked himself, what shall I do? For I don't have space to store my harvest. And he says, this is what I shall do. I shall tear down my barns and build larger ones. And there I shall store all of my grain and other goods. And I shall say to myself, now it's for you. You have so many good things stored up for many years. Rest. Eat, drink, and be merry. Anybody reading that think, ooh, I would like to have been that guy? Anybody there think, man, that would be awesome to be that successful? That would be awesome to have so much that you couldn't contain it? You ever sell your house and move to another one? If you've lived in that house for a long time, you know you have collected over the years a lot of stuff. And you know what's very common among people that move? They get rid of a lot of junk that they found out that they didn't really need at all. That happened to Kim and me when we moved. I mean, we had lived in the house we had lived in for about 16 years. And when we moved, I couldn't believe some of the stuff that we still had. Well, this guy had so much that not only did he not have any more room for it, he had to tear down and expand and build bigger. Now, you would think that in this culture... Uh, that Jesus lived in, they thought that anybody that was successful as far as financially, that they were blessed by God, that they had God's favor. In fact, they equated that with being loved by God. Oh, that guy's rich. God must really love him. That, that's what their culture taught. But I want you to see what Jesus did to explode the myth and to show us how that we can be rich in things that are important and not necessarily be rich in finances. He said, but God said to him, you fool. Wait a minute. He just described a guy that was successful. He just described a guy that you and I would like to be like. Anybody here like to be able to be blessed so much that you don't have any more room for a blessing? I would. I mean, I don't mind being there. And God said to him, you fool, you fool, this night your life will be demanded of you and the thing you have prepared, to whom then will they belong? The things that you've collected, the stuff you've gotten over the years, all of this wealth, when you die, then whose will it be? You know, I've told you, I've done a lot of funerals, I've never seen a U-Haul trailer pulled behind a hearse. Now, I'm sure some smart aleck is going to probably try to do that one day. But do you know why? Because you can't take it with you. I don't care how much you have. 
you can send some things ahead. That's another message for another time. But God said about this man, he said, you fool. He said, this night your life will be demanded of you and the things you are prepared to whom will they belong? Notice what he says. Thus will it be for the one who stores up treasure for himself, but is not rich. And I want you to get this next phrase because it's the key to what we're talking about today. They are not rich in what? matters to God. The reason he was foolish was because he was not rich in what matters to God. Now I want you to understand that his foolishness was not in what he did. His foolishness had nothing to do with what he did. In fact, I can find lots and lots of scripture to recommend this man. Go to the book of Proverbs There are lots of proverbs about how to manage your finances, about how to manage your wealth, of how to tend your crops, of how to look at life through the lens that God wants us to see our finances through. So let me ask you a couple questions. Was there anything wrong with being rich? No. Anybody that equates being rich uh, with being bad or not loved by God doesn't understand Scripture. Now, Jesus did say it's harder for a rich man to get into heaven than it is for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. And his disciples said, well, who then can be saved? He said, well, with God, with man it's impossible, but with God all things are uh, possible. And his point is this, not that rich people can't be saved, but that it requires God for anyone to be saved, whether you're rich or poor. And often, when we, get so, when we get so rich in the things of this world, we don't become rich toward God. Very easy. So was there anything wrong with being rich? No. Was there anything wrong with having a blessed, bountiful harvest? No. Nothing at all. In fact, that would have been a blessing from God. Because the truth is, we can plant, we can sow, we can fertilize, we can prepare, but only God can grow things. So this was a blessing from God. Was there anything wrong with his plan financially? Well, no. The guy was successful. He decided that he was going to prepare for the future. Uh, Should you and I prepare for the future? Yes. Should we save? Yes. Yes. Uh, Should we make sure that we handle our finances properly? Yes. So the problem was not in what he did. His problem is in what he did not do. You see, it is easy for you and me to look at people that are successful in things of this world and to be jealous or to misunderstand or even in our own success to revel in that as if that came only from us that God somehow was not involved in that. It was, all I believe in hard work and I believe in all those things. But listen, we don't get anywhere without God. So the question then becomes, what did the man do wrong? I mean, if he was really doing good things, what did he do wrong? Well, I think we find that answer in another story from the Bible. Jesus, these are the words of Jesus. He says, as it was in the days of Noah. You remember that story, right, from the book of Genesis? Noah, the whole world was turned against God. The whole world was wicked. God told Noah to build a boat, build an ark, and he did. God saved his family and the human race as a result. Remember that? And then afterwards, there was a rainbow and all this stuff. Remember that, right? Well, Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. In other words, when Jesus comes again. And here's what he said. I want you to get the wicked things they were doing. They were eating. Oh, you wicked people planning to go to lunch afterwards. I'm telling you what. Jesus said in the days of Noah, they were doing some horrible things. They were eating. They were drinking. Oh, some of you, uh, according to what that means, that could have meant they were drinking sweet tea. All right. Could have meant they were drinking water. 
most likely meant they were drinking wine. Some of you are going to go home and have a beverage that you cannot talk about in a Baptist church, all right? So, oh, so wicked. Uh, they were eating and drinking. They were surviving. They were enjoying life. They were eating and drinking. And then, get this, they were marrying. Oh, these wicked people doing the thing that God started in the Garden of Eden. They were doing what God said. They were marrying. And not only that, get this, this is the height of it. They were giving their children away. And in other words, they were encouraging their kids to get married. Oh, what a wicked culture. Well, once again, the problem was not what they did. The reason Jesus called that generation wicked and the reason that God called this man in this story a fool was because of what he did not do. And he had no room for God in his life. And friends, that is the definition of being poor in what matters most to God. You see, the fact is, you can have the most success in the world. You can uh, achieve every dream that you've ever dreamed in life. And I want you to understand that if you do that, but you don't have a relationship with God, and you don't have what's most important to Him, then you're being, in the words of Jesus, a fool. Now, I'm not calling you a fool. I would never do that unless you were driving slow in front of me and I was in a hurry. And then I might say, get out of my way, fool. But you wouldn't hear me say that, all right? But Jesus said the reason that man was foolish in that story is that he was not rich toward God. Here's the thing. He did not remember to be thankful. That's very important. The man in this story, why was he foolish? One of the things was he didn't have the right attitude. He wasn't thankful for what God had blessed him with. You think it's about all about you. No, he said that was foolish. And then uh, he was not generous. Now, generosity does not just extend to rich people. It extends to all people. God expects us to live life as if it's not all about us. He wants us to be generous. He wants us to be thankful. And I think one thing that this man in this story failed to do was to be missional. In other words, he was not concerned about the plan of God, the kingdom of God, he was not concerned about reaching people with his resources. He was not concerned about helping people with his resources that were in need. Nothing wrong with him enjoying his blessings. Nothing wrong with him being rich. Nothing wrong with him having nice stuff. That's not the point. The point is that when we're not thankful and when we're not missional and when we're not generous, we're being foolish with what God has given us. We're not rich in what matters most to God. Let, let me read to you Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 to 40. And then he said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And on these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Jesus just summarized the entire Bible in those two verses. Jesus just summarized the entire mission of God in those two commandments. And I want to just give them to you. And this is what's important to God. God said, this man was foolish because he was not rich in what mattered to God. And here's the two things that matter to God. And they are the most important things that matter to God, and they matter to God a lot. And here they are. It's your relationship with God and your love for other people. That's what matters to God. In other words, if I could just uh, put the entire Bible in one little phrase, here it would be, love God and love people. 
Do you want to know what matters to God? Well, Jesus said these are the most two important things in the Bible. The entire Bible can be summarized by this. Your relationship with God, loving God, and loving people. Do you know why this man was a fool? Because he didn't love God like he should. He didn't have that relationship with God like he should. He didn't give God that time like he should. It was all about him. There was no time for him, for his life, in his life for God. There was no room in his life. Oh, I'm sure he didn't hate God. Now, this is a fictional story that Jesus told, so we don't know much about this person or this character, but there was no indication in the story that Jesus told that this man was a guy that was an atheist. A man that hated God, no. If you asked him, he probably would have said, of course I love God. But according to the story that Jesus told, the reason he was a fool was he had no room in his life for God. He didn't love God. He didn't have that relationship with God. And as a result, he did not love people. Love God, love people. That's the whole mission of God. Love God, be in that relationship with him, love people. Uh, That's the whole story of the Bible. Love God, love people. You want to know what matters most to God? Love him, have a relationship with God, and love others. That is the mission of God, and that is how to be rich toward God. And my prayer for you today is this, that today... If you're not already, that you'll start, that you'll begin, that you'll pray, that you'll ask God to help you be rich in what matters most. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for Jesus and the things that we learn, just so incredible what you do in our lives, God. Thank you so much for this beautiful story that Jesus told, that we can learn how to be rich in what matters most to you. And Father, I pray that each one of us will take this seriously, that we'll love you and we'll love others. Before I finish my prayer, if you'll just stay in a posture of prayer, let me ask you a very simple question. What is God saying to you? What is God speaking to you about today? Maybe you came in and God just kind of blindsided you with this truth today, that I'm not rich in what matters most to God. You can be. And it begins with a relationship with Him. Maybe today, those of you online joining us, you'd say, I've never had that relationship with God. I've never received Christ as my Savior. Let me just tell you that today is a great day because today can be the day that you begin to be rich toward God in your relationship with Him. And by the way, it's not about the good things you do. It's about the great things that God has already done. And so you can commit your life to Christ right now while you're watching. You can say something like this to God. Dear God, I want to love what you love. I want to be in relationship with you. I want to love you with all my heart, soul, and mind. And I want you to help me to love what matters most to you. And I want you to come into my life today. If you'll pray that prayer, if you'll ask God to save you, he will. And if you pray that online, please click the button at the bottom of the screen there that says, I prayed to receive Christ today. And if you did that, just also fill out a next step card so we can contact you and help you take your next step. For those of you in the room today that maybe today you said, you know what? I need to be rich toward God and I've not loved God. Once again, this is not about how good you've been. It's not about your works, but it's about God's grace. And you say, I'd like to receive Christ as my Savior today. I'd like to become a follower of Jesus. You can pray that same simple prayer that I suggested, or just on your own say, God, I need you today. God, I want to follow you today. I want to love you today. And if you will, take the next step card out of the seat pocket in front of you and fill out your name and your contact information and drop it in the drop box on the way out today. Let us know that you want to love God more. And there may be others that have already started a relationship with Christ, but today was a reminder. I need to love God more. 
if we're honest, every one of us should say, I need to love God more. I need to love God more in my own life. I'm sure you do too. There are areas of my life that I said, boy, I wish I did better there. I'm sure you have those same areas, same kinds of areas. But God says we're to love him with all our heart, soul, and mind. And we're to love others. Love God. Love others. And I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand because, uh, to be honest, that's a very low commitment level. But I wonder today if you were challenged by the Word of God and you'd say today, man, I want to leave loving what matters to God. I want to be rich in what matters most to God. I want to love people more. Maybe you start with your family or your neighbor, the person you go to school with, the person you work with, and you start there. Maybe you say, I'm going to go on this missions trip. I'm going to help reach people that don't know Christ. Maybe you say, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to begin to give. But in some tangible way, you're going to begin to serve or do something that expresses how you can love others. Or maybe today you'd say, you know what? I need to love God more. Maybe it's about your quiet time, maybe your prayer time, maybe reading the Bible. I don't know what it's about. But you know, and I hope you will commit that to God right now. Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for you giving us what matters most to you. And I pray that as a church and as individuals in this church, that we would be rich in what matters most to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks so much for joining us today on the Avalon Church YouTube channel. We hope the message you heard today encouraged you and strengthened you in your walk with Jesus wherever you are. If you know of someone that could use today's message, be sure to share it with a friend and also hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a single message. If you feel led today to give towards the mission and vision of Avalon Church, you can do so by clicking the Give button on the screen. Thanks so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time.